Hi, this is the second video in our series on how you can use a combination of JIRA and Confluence to implement the Scrum framework. Now in the first video, I went through the Scrum roles, the product goal, and the product backlog. Now, if you missed out on that video, I'll put a link up on the screen now and you'll also find it in the description below. So in this video, I'm going to continue unpacking the Scrum diagram. We'll run through sprint planning. We'll look at how we can visualize the work that's going on within the sprint day by day, the daily Scrum, and also the definition of done. And just a reminder, this is just an overview. Uh, if you want to deep dive into certain topics, certain parts of the Scrum diagram, what I'll do is I'll put links up on the screen when it's relevant, and you'll also find those links in the description below. Okay, so without any further delay, let's continue going through this Scrum diagram, and we'll start off with sprint planning. So in the previous video, I mentioned that the product owner will establish the product backlog. And just in case you want some tips on how to establish that product backlog and get it right, or maybe you wanna coach your product owner on it, I'm going to put a video on the screen now. So you can check that out. That's a video that we created to deep dive into the product backlog and what makes a good one. Uh, so you can check that out when you get a moment. But what's gonna happen is once your product owner establishes the product backlog, the team is going to begin delivering those product backlog items, but in an iterative way. So Scrum calls an iteration a sprint. And a sprint is really just a, a time box. And it can be anywhere between one to four weeks. Most Scrum teams will follow a two week sprint cycle. And at the beginning of these sprint cycles, what we need to do is determine what can be done within that amount of time. So remember I mentioned that the developers are responsible not just for how the work gets done, but also determining how much work can get done within a sprint cycle at a time. So the team determines how much can get done at what is called sprint planning. Now, how do you do that in JIRA. Let me give you an overview now. Before we get into sprint planning with JIRA, I first want to advise you that there are a couple of details that you will want to have prepared coming into this sprint planning session. Firstly, make sure your product owner has prioritized these product backlog items and added a sufficient level of detail. This will ensure that your team has a clear understanding as to what needs to be done and you'll find your sprint planning session will run a lot more smoothly. Secondly, make sure the team's capacity has been determined. And this could be in terms of time or, or what's called velocity. So once you've determined their capacity, we can then understand how much work they can actually fit into that upcoming sprint. Now, if you'd like more information on that topic, uh, you can check out my more in-depth video series on sprint planning. I'll put a link up on the screen now and you can also find it in the description below. So with those two details prepared, uh, what you want to do is first create a sprint in JIRA. And this is done by simply clicking on the create sprint button here. And then you'll notice that this section appears. So what we can do here is first set a few details for our sprint. And you can do that just by clicking on the ellipses or the three dots here, click edit sprint. From here, you can add in a sprint name, you can set your sprint duration and dates, and you can also set a goal. So if you want to decide on an overarching goal for the sprint, this is typically something that your product owner should decide upon. Uh, you can put it in there. So just hit update and it will be saved. The next step is to determine the team's sprint plan or uh, what Scrum calls a sprint backlog. So the sprint backlog gives us a level of transparency over what the team has planned and how they are progressing day by day. A sprint backlog in JIRA can be prepared in a couple of ways. 
Uh, first, it can be done by dragging our product backlog items into this sprint section. So you can see what a team might do is I'll say, yeah, we can fit that in. Uh, yeah, we could do that and this. And they might say, okay, that's, that's enough for the sprint. And these product backlog items then become our sprint backlog items. So that's one way you can do it. The alternative that some teams like to use is to also create sub subtasks. So subtasks can be created on each of our product backlog items and it's done. Uh, you, can, you can click here, right? It says create subtask and then it'll take you down to this section where you can add in things like you know, the development, let's say, the testing, uh, the review by the product owner. So we can create subtasks for each of the product backlog items and then these subtasks become the sprint backlog items. So it's up to you which way you want to do it. Some teams like to just have the product backlog items as being the, the sprint plan. Uh, other teams like to have the subtasks here become the, the sprint plan. And usually the decider is whether you've got more than one person working on a product backlog item at a time. And uh, the great thing about subtasks is you can assign them. So we could assign them to specific people within the scrum team. And so we can get a clear idea of who's doing what within the sprint and also how they're progressing day by day. So again, the team drags in how much work they feel they can get done. Once they have reached their capacity, they're gonna say, okay, that's all we can fit. They'll have a chat to the product owner and then we can start the sprint. So that's done by simply clicking this start sprint button at the top there, hit start, start again, and away we go. So once your team kicks off their sprint, what they'll need to do is update their sprint backlog on a daily basis. Uh, we'll want them to update it on a daily basis so it's a true reflection of what's going on. And we want to be able to visualize that sprint backlog so again, we can see how things are progressing day by day. So how do we visualize our sprint backlog? In JIRA, we use what's called the active sprint board. And you'll notice that after you hit start sprint, it automatically takes you to this view. If you're not on this view, you can simply click on active sprints in the left panel there. And it gives you a basic task board. So you can see here we've got to do, in progress and done. And the user stories, the product backlog items are in priority order, top to bottom. You can also see our subtasks here. And what the team can do is they can simply drag and drop them into the appropriate status as they work on them and as they complete them. If you want to customize this board, because I know for some of you, you may want to have more columns or uh, you may want to visualize it in a different way, you can go up to, again, the ellipses here, three dots, click on board settings. And in here, there are a number of items that you can tweak and change. So I'm not gonna go through it in this video and you can have a look when you get a chance, but just to show you, all right, you can add some columns here and change it. You can also change what are the swim lanes, what are the rows on your task board. So I always like to have it set to stories, but you can do it in other ways as well. Some teams like to set it to assignee and they can see what each person is doing and, and how they're going, but up, up to you. Okay, so again, your sprint backlog should be updated on a daily basis. So it's a true reflection of what's going on within the sprint. And then the whole team will be able to collaborate more effectively because they can see what everyone else is working on. Once your team has their active sprint board set up, it's important to review it regularly. When do we review it? I like to encourage teams to look at it at each daily scrum. So you might call the daily scrum the daily huddle, the daily stand up, they're all the same thing and it's an opportunity for the scrum team to synchronize. Now typically most scrum teams will synchronize through answering three questions. What did you do yesterday? 
what do you plan to do today, and do you have any impediments? So by having a team answer those three questions, what's going to happen is firstly, of course, the team synchronizes, which means they're going to collaborate, which means it's more likely they're going to achieve their sprint plan. But you'll also see another big benefit, and that's accountability. When team members start telling each other, hey, this is what I'm going to do today, they are far more likely to do it. And don't forget about the last question. Do you have any impediments or things slowing you down? Uh, when teams say, hey, yes, um, I can't uh, get access to this certain person and I can't clarify requirements or I can't get on with this work because this blocker is in the way, well, that's when the scrum master will jump into action. They are our dedicated impediment remover and they should be helping the team remove anything that's getting in their way or slowing them down. So that's the big benefit of the daily scrum, synchronization, accountability, impediment removal. Now at these daily scrum sessions, I like the team to not only give those updates, but to also refer to that active sprint board. So they're pointing out which tasks they are working on. If they're not up to date, they're updating them because we want it to be a true reflection, as in that active sprint board, we want it to be a true reflection as to what the team is working on. So by doing this on a daily basis, again, the team's able to see what everyone else is working on. They're able to better collaborate with one another. And of course, that means they're gonna be far more likely to finish off their sprint plan. So every day the team is going to review that active sprint board, update their tasks, and they're aiming to complete those product backlog items as soon as possible. What we need to do is make sure that when a team says that a product backlog item is complete, that everybody agrees, okay, and we're aligned. So how do we establish a very clear, let's call it definition, of when things are finished. Well, in Scrum, we have this artifact called a definition of done, or DOD for short. And the DOD is typically a checklist, and this checklist will apply to our product backlog items. So why does Scrum ask us to establish a checklist, ask us to have this DOD? Well, firstly, it's going to make sure that your team is aligned, on when they say something is complete, it needs to tick all these boxes. And secondly, it ensures that the team's going to be consistent. Every sprint they deliver with the same amount of quality. They're not sometimes doing things, sometimes not, no. They follow this checklist and they're gonna do so sprint after sprint after sprint. So what does a DOD look like? Here's an indicative example and don't take it and copy it, okay? You're going to need to create one that's appropriate for your team, but just to give you a feel for it, I'll just touch upon a few of the bullet points here. So you can see the first bullet point is all functional test cases pass. So a lot of times, scrum teams that are delivering software, they have a tester or a quality assurance person on the team, and that person will create test cases and we need to make sure that everyone agrees, okay, those test cases have been done and they are passing. So that's why we have that on there. Uh, we might have peer reviewed and standards met and that is there so that we get someone else on the team to review another person's work. And typically that can have uh, some great improvements on the team's quality output because when you get someone else looking at someone's work, they will typically spot things that that person didn't see and people just typically tend to do a better job when Again, they know someone else is gonna look at it. So I usually add that one in. At a minimum, I always suggest teams have the last two meets acceptance criteria and has been reviewed and accepted by the product owner. So again, definition of done is typically a checklist. And for each product backlog item in a sprint, we need to make sure that we meet this checklist and we've, again, ticked off all the boxes. So how do you implement a DOD using Confluence and JIRA. Firstly, I like teams to document their DOD in Confluence so that everybody can refer to it and be on board with it. Secondly, 
A lot of times I get scrum masters telling me it can be difficult to get a team to follow this definition of done. Sometimes they forget about it and they don't refer to it. So what I like to do is if you're using subtasks for your sprint backlog items, I encourage the team to create subtasks that are related to this DOD criteria. So you could have a subtask for testing, a subtask for peer review, another task for uh, the product owner to review the work. So what happens then is when the team adds these subtasks to their sprint plan, they're effectively going to tick the box on this criteria when they get those tasks done. So firstly, again, you can, you can add subtasks or what you can do is you can add columns to your active sprint board. So for example, you might have a column called reviewed and any time it goes, a piece of work goes through that column, it, it, we, we get it reviewed and we can tick that criteria off. Or lastly, it's a little bit more advanced and I'll have another video on this topic, but you can add custom controls to the product backlog item view. And some teams like to add a custom control, which is actually a checklist. And of course this checklist is the DOD and once all the criteria has been checked off, we can then mark the product backlog item as done. So there's three options for your DOD. Either the subtasks, you can add those in, or you can have a, a column on the active sprint board. Or lastly, you can create a custom control to have a checklist on your product backlog item view. All right, so we've spoken about sprint planning and determining what we can get done within our sprint cycle. We've spoken about the active sprint board as a way to see what's going on on a daily basis uh, with the team, who's working on what, and then having that daily scrum to make sure that the team is synchronizing, staying accountable, and removing impediments. And then finally, we spoke about this DOD as a way to manage the quality output of the team and ensure they're being consistent sprint after sprint after sprint. So once the work, the product backlog item meets that DOD, it then forms part of what's called the product increment of that sprint cycle. And what we're going to do with that product increment is inspect and adapt it. And that's gonna be the topic of our next video when we talk about sprint reviews and sprint retrospectives. So if you haven't done so yet, don't forget to subscribe so you get notified when the next video comes out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.